Hi, and thanks for joining me. Haven't those signets grown? <laughs> They're much larger than the parents now. Anyway, I hope you're all uh, keeping safe and well. This is another midweek chat. Part of the reason for doing this one is that when I did the last one, I had some extra footage that I didn't use. And I thought it would be a good idea to make use of that now. And also, I wanted to comment further on the fact that I often see remarks and comments that people have made, but cannot answer them. But first of all, a big hello and welcome to any new subscribers. This is not one of my regular cruising videos. It's just a friendly uh, chat to keep in touch with people. So uh, I hope you'll stay with me. I'm Alan from my narrowboat venture. For those that don't know. <laughs> anyway, what I was trying to explain was that on YouTube, I can go into a section where I can see all the comments that are made on my videos. And that I find is a very good way of doing things. I also receive email notifications and I think what I used to do was I used to go through the comments and answer them and delete the emails. And then I sort of twigged that I was getting some comments that I wasn't responding to. So what I now do is I look more closely and I tick off the emails as it were when I've answered the comment. And again it has happened on the last video, not the very last one, but the last Boat Talk video, when I discuss this, I've had two comments made on that video, which I've not been able to answer. Now, the first one was from Gen C, and I got an email, I could read the comment, and when I clicked on reply, which should open it in YouTube and enable me to respond, it was not there. A week later, the same happened. I had a message from David David <laughs> suggesting I buy a little something. And again, I clicked on the reply button in the email and it doesn't open up the comment, which is very annoying. So apologies to both of you that I've not responded. And for David's benefit, I have taken up your advice <laughs> and uh, ordered what you suggested. Whether I would use such a gizmo, I don't know. What David suggested I buy was some of these fittings to go over the bridge of the nose to keep the mask off your face and stop your glasses steaming up. And I have done that and I'm awaiting for them to arrive. So we'll report further as to whether, whether they work or not or whether I want to be seen wearing such a thing. But it goes underneath your mask. But I'm just wearing those uh, cheap, disposable, sort of hospital-type masks. So whether it will be any good, I don't know. This video, as I say, it's a bit chatty, but the latter half of the video is a motoring video. I've been up to see my father and brother in North Norfolk, and I thought I'd do some filming on the way back. I know that you don't all want to see that, but overseas viewers are particularly keen on seeing some of the countryside. My return trip didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> I won't say any more now, but uh, you'll need to watch that. But um, I am aware that not all of you want to see that sort of thing, so I've put it at the end. What I will say is the next part of the Foxton Cruise will be published at the weekend. So for those of you that are enjoying watching that cruise, many thanks for your lovely comments on that, by the way. Um, it seems to have gone down very well, this cruise. It's very leisurely. <laughs> it's not a lot happens, but uh, people do seem to be enjoying that. I think that was all for now. Um, so... I'm just checking my notes. Yes, I am getting senile and I do make notes now and again <laughs> in case I miss something. But I think that's all I wanted to say. So uh, I hope you enjoy this uh, friendly chat <laughs> and um, I'll catch up with you later. Bye for now. In this packet is something I've been looking forward to receiving. I haven't opened it yet as I thought you might like to join me to do that. You'll be amazed, I think, when you see what it is. Um, it's nothing special, although it's something that um, I need. <laughs> it 
It didn't cost me a lot of money. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But I thought you might like to join me for the opening. So um, I've got some scissors here. Oops. <laughs> Let's see if I cut across the top. And let's see what pops out. Well, there it is. And already, I think it's not what I've ordered. It's a brush uh, to replace the uh, the head in um, in a companion set. These come as fifty millimeters as a standard width or two inches. I needed one slightly smaller and I haven't measured this yet as you see I've just taken it out but to me it does look like two inches. The problem is that I bought it to go into here. You can see how that has worn down and if you put the two side by side <laughs> there's quite a difference but that is not going to fit in here which is very annoying because I've paid virtually double to buy one the right size to fit because you can buy two of these 50 mil ones for about seven pounds. I paid seven pounds, three pound 50 odd to buy one that fits this and three pound 50 postage. So let me show you what should happen. This unscrews in here And that comes out and the new one should fit in. Look at that. Bought it on eBay. I suppose this can only go through here to a certain extent. It won't screw all the way in. So I've been given the wrong product. That is very, very annoying because I was hoping to show you that this was the replacement for that. It's amazing how um, <laughs> these little brushes wear down. So disappointment abounds. How annoying is that? <laughs> I'll get it sorted out, don't worry. Well I've researched what I bought. <laughs> it's my fault. I accidentally ordered the wrong product which is a great shame but these things happen. I have spoken to the company and I have now made the right order, but uh, this, this won't go to waste, I think. I do have a larger brush. Let me just see if I can find it. I, I do have a brush of this sort of size. I tend not to use this one. I find it too long for a small stove, but this hopefully would, would fit in there. So it may not go to waste and um, I'll just need to be more careful next time. I spent a lot of time researching to find a brush head that would fit and I only found the one company that did them and I'd forgotten but it should have had a plastic head <laughs> so the replacement for for this will actually come with a plastic head as I can't find one with a, a wooden head but uh, so I've reordered my mistake I seem to be good at making mistakes recently, don't I? But uh, I have to try and make sure it doesn't continue. <laughs> it's that senility setting in, I think. <laughs> anyway, we live and learn. So that's that for now. <laughs> well, here it is. <laughs> My replacement brush head. Haven't opened it yet. I thought we'd do that together. <laughs> Got my scissors here at the ready. I can tell it's much smaller, so it should fit. So here it is, the new brush head. I have actually been using the, the other one that came. I just screwed it in at the bottom here. So now I can unscrew this one. Get this part, screw that through there, and hopefully, 
Uh, this goes from bad to worse, doesn't it? I had imagined that the thread on here would thread into this end, but it's not actually doing it. So I need to um, I need to adapt that in some way. What a nuisance! <laughs> Okay, I don't see the wind, do I? Probably easier in a way, just to... That head is so much bigger. You don't realise it when you're just looking at a, um, pictures on a internet site. But that head is so much bigger than this one with regards to the uh, number of bristles and so forth that it might just be easier to screw that in there as I had it and be done with it. <laughs> Oh well. I do my best. It doesn't always work out though, does it? So putting that back in there like that might be the better option and just use it in that way. <laughs> uh, you win some and you lose some. So that's it for now. <laughs> Catch up with you later. In editing the new cruising series where I head up to Foxton Locks, I've made another sort of error if you like <laughs> I, wouldn't, I won't call it a mistake it was quite unintentional but uh, um, I explained once before about the peculiar GoPro numbering system when you set the GoPro to work the first film is numbered GOPR after about 10 minutes it films in 10 minute sec sections and each section is about 10 minutes long when it starts the second section, it gives it a GPR number. And the third section also has a GPR number and they increment one, two, three, four. So when you look at what you've filmed, if you've turned the camera on and off several times in the course of a day, you're gonna have different GoPro numbers and different GPR numbers, which are not in sequence. And I've been caught out by this before when I've not copied all of the um, film across and it's happened again. I need to empty the SD card on which the film is recorded because if you're recording for two or three hours it fills up. So to use it again you need to empty it. So when I do that I copy things across but if I have by chance still got some of the previous day's film on it I will look at the numbers and pick out the numbers that I need. Now there are various ways of organising um, film clips. You can sort them by date order, when they were modified, their name, their type, so many different ways. You think it would be straightforward to copy across what you want, but again in a couple of instances I have missed out some clips. And I think some of you who watch the channel quite a lot might notice that, hang on, it's a slightly different style here <laughs> to what we normally see. So um, having said previously, I need to get my head around this and not make any errors. I have done so again, and it is really most annoying because when I'm filming, I do have something in mind in my head as to how the editing is going to work. <laughs> And when you're missing some film, it really changes the whole approach. So I'm sorry about that. I'm hoping that um, it won't spoil your enjoyment of any of the videos. It's only happened, I think, on, on one of the films. So um, you probably won't pick up on it. But it's just something I mentioned that it's, it niggles me. I find it very difficult to control the GoPro. You have to do it through your phone. And making the connection with it is awkward, so I don't go into it much and I can't check the settings. It may be that there is a way of renumbering the sequencing of the film clips. That would be good, that would be very helpful. Um, perhaps anyone out there who knows the answer could let me know, because I'd be very interested. It's not something I've researched. I spend a lot of time on the editing and I don't spend so much time on researching things of that nature. But any advice would be greatly received. Hi, I'm just on my way back from visiting my brother 
he had a very notable milestone birthday this week. So I popped up to see him, his partner, and my father. As many of you know, he's quite an old boy now. He's 96 and still in reasonably good health. He's got all his faculties, which is absolutely great. Fortunately, where I am in the marina, where my brother is in North Norfolk, we are in the medium tier for COVID, which is the lowest tier, which means we can still get together. <laughs> my sat nav is talking to me, he puts me off a bit. It's a very wet day, it's going to be set in all day today, but um, it doesn't really bother me. I'm not on a motorway or anything, I'm just poddling along like I do on the boat, so um, it'll be fine. You can probably pick up, I hope, from some of the colours of the trees how autumnal it is now. Coming up to a roundabout. I should really know this route now, but I like to use the sat nav. I actually use Waze, which some of you may know. It's an app that I have on my phone, and it's excellent at predicting when you will arrive somewhere. It is only ever a few minutes out. It's quite a phenomenal thing. Obviously, if there's an incident on the route, that will change things, but uh, generally, it's very good. And uh, I can see how my progress is going. Shush! <laughs> right, she so should be quiet for a while now, as I'm on a straight stretch for 16 miles. Yeah, it's been raining all day. As I said earlier, it is set in. It's going to rain right through the day and into the evening. So, I'll say cheerio for now. Catch up with you later. I think it's been raining a lot heavier since I last spoke to you. I'm just coming down to the roundabout where I'm going to turn off and stop somewhere for lunch. And I need to nip into store to get something so I'm just coming up to it now the roundabout are very very waterlogged. I've seen some very bad instances where the whole carriageway is under water. Well it's virtually stopped raining and that's just a few minutes ago when I said how horrendous it was. <laughs> again I stopped for about an hour so I'm refreshed and ready to carry on with my journey it should take me about an hour and a half to get back to the marina I'm not planning any other stops I've got some supplies on the board that will last me for a day or two until I go shopping again As you can imagine the rivers are very high at the moment with all the rain we've had the rain isn't so bad actually at the moment. There seems to be a bit less spray on the roads. I just had a message on the sat nav that traffic is building ahead. There's going to be a 12 minute delay. It's a nuisance, isn't it? <laughs> so my own half is going to be uh, an hour and three quarters. 
well this is just a few moments later and um, come to a complete halt We're just moving off very slowly I didn't realize I was going to hit the traffic so quickly <laughs> not quite sure what the issue is perhaps we'll find out a little bit further along taken my fleece off and rescued a bag of um, humbugs, mint humbugs. Rather like a humbug when I'm travelling. There's very little traffic coming the other way, which is often an indication that there has been an incident. Well, we're edging forward very slowly. I can hear a siren not quite sure what direction it's coming from. Oh, it's coming up from behind me. Something will flash by in a minute. Looks like a red car. There it goes now. Well, we're actually moving properly for a little while. Don't know how far we're going to get. nearly 40 miles an hour. Just stopping again. Watch out, accident reported ahead. At the roundabout, take the second exit onto A47. I'm at a roundabout with three lanes coming into it, three roads coming into it. I'm going to turn right, so I'm going to miss one on my left. It's that left turn, I think where the accident has occurred. I'm not sure if we're being stopped from turning that way. No, we actually have to go left. I've got it the wrong way. The accident is to my right on my route. There's a police officer there stopping the traffic going that way. So I'm now heading off in a completely different direction, which is exciting in itself, Turn isn't left. it? lovely railway abutments here. Further down I was hoping to show you where the railway used to cross the river. been held up quite considerably but I'm now on a dual carriageway don't know how long that will last need a right turn up here just passing an Amazon place warehouse I should say distribution warehouse even about 10 minutes away. 
away from the marina. I'm about to turn right onto the road that runs past the marina. So I'll shortly be back. I don't think I've seen this much traffic come up here. <laughs> Waiting for the gate to open. Off we go. Strictly obeying, of course, the 10 miles per hour speed limit. Well, I hope you enjoyed that chat. I know a lot of you have said you like that sort of uh, approach to keeping in touch and I think there will be many more similar videos as winter progresses because it is a good way of communicating with you, <laughs> letting you know what I'm up to. Can't always get out cruising. I hope to do some more cruising than I did last year but um, with other commitments and so forth it's not always possible. But I am hoping to get out more than I did. Swans have just come again. <laughs> so just looking at them. Fortunately now there are only four signets, which is a great shame. I'm told that one of them was caught by a fox. They have grown so enormously. <laughs> it's amazing the size they've reached. <laughs> I hope you your families and friends are keeping safe and well. Things are not too good here in the UK. They have been getting worse again with many areas going into the higher tiers of lockdown. When it will all end, who knows? Christmas is uncertain for many families at the moment. We don't know what the state of play will be in December. It's a very, very worrying time for many, many people. So do look after yourselves, keep safe and well. And I should say, if you haven't yet done so, please do subscribe and click the bell to receive future notifications of videos. That's most important <laughs> if you want to keep track of me. All that remains for me to say in the final words, <laughs> does he ever get there, you wonder, <laughs> is look after yourselves. And bye for now.